we'll um, start the decision making. But we'll go ahead and start with item one and start with the presentations. Okay. And so with that, uh, I think Mr. Randall, if you could uh, read the agenda item. Sure. <clears throat> item number one is a report from the Bureau of Engineering and City Administrative Officer reports er, in response to motion of Farrell Krikorian relative to the city's participation as a non-federal sponsor for the United States Army Corps of Engineers Los Angeles River Ecosystem Restoration Project, also known as Alternative 20. Um, this matter was also referred to the Budget and Finance Committee. Thank you. Now, what I'd like to do is invite uh, Gary Lee Moore from BOE up and uh, Matthias Farfan from CAO. And then, uh, Patty, uh, let's see. Could you come up as well? We need another chair, though. Oh, there we go. <laughs> thank you. Well, I want to thank all of you for being here, uh, and especially for, for your hard work in the last month. Uh, this um, item has taken lots of twists and turns over the months, especially the last few months, and we talked about that a little bit at the, uh, the last hearing. Are you okay there with that door? <laughs> there we go. There he is, ladies okay. and gentlemen. Victor Davis. And Tom Levine. There he is. Everyone's coming in. So, Tom, for the first time, you were just upstaged. <laughs> for the first time ever. I've never seen it happen before until now. Thank you, David Hirone. All right. I'd like to, uh, to welcome our esteemed colleague, Tom Labange. Uh, and, uh, Mr. Labonge, we were just about to move forward with the reports on Alternative 20, um, and we, we know that we want the best product here for Alternative 20, the 11-mile stretch um, that we've been focused on so diligently over the past several years. Um, we want it to be within reason, within reasonable cost, not at, at expense of everything else that we do in the city. Uh, it's an important, important item for all of us. Um, and we know that with your collective expertise, we've been able to come up with a way forward. So I want to thank all of you in advance of that. Uh, so having, having uh, said that, we are welcome, uh, joined by uh, Mr. Gil Cedillo from the 1st Council District. Yeah. And so uh, let's go ahead and um, I'll tell you what, Mr. Moore, if you would start with your presentation for, from BOE, uh, and then we'll go from there. Good afternoon, Council Members. Uh, Gary Lee Moore, City Engineer, Bureau of Engineering. Um, it's great to be here today to have this report before you, and I do want to acknowledge and thank uh, the Chair. Uh, you and your staff have spent a lot of time with us in the recent weeks, and we sincerely appreciate it, along with all the Council Members, but especially we thank you for your time and effort on this. Since uh, 2006, the um, the City of Los Angeles has been serving as the non-federal sponsor for the uh, Los Angeles River Ecosystem Restoration Feasibility Study. And this study, which is, as you said, is an 11-mile stretch from Griffith Park to First Street. And the plan here today that we're here to talk about is the study's recommended plan, widely known as Alternative 20, is now also known as uh, Plan P will be cost shared between the federal government and the city with its partners as the non-federal sponsor. And as part of this process, um, uh, the Army Corps has to take this study before their uh, Civil Works Review Board. And right now, it's tentatively slated for the end of June for this. And as part of this, the city must submit a letter of intent affirming its commitment to the project as a non-federal sponsor and complete a non-federal sponsor self-certification of financial capability for the decision documents. And that is what's here today. Uh, I would reiterate that uh, this is a, a long-term implementation uh, of this project, and there will be many opportunities and steps along the way, and this is just another step in the process. It does not um, uh, uh, lock us into anything today, but it's another step in the process. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, Matthias, would you like to add before yeah. we open the questions? Mm -hmm. Well, Matthias Farfan for Office of the CLA. Mm -hmm. And as a result of the, the city engineer's report at the previous uh, committee meeting, um, it was uh, 
noted that the costs have escalated since the, the last reporting on this item. So the CLA's office was asked to report back on what, what the primary drivers for those escalation of costs were. So the, the CLA submitted a report that goes through that, and it, and it pretty much places uh, the current estimated cost at $1.36 billion for the alternative 20, which is the, the locally preferred plan. Uh, the report also describes the, the cost sharing uh, that would be involved with this plan. And it pretty much just uh, focuses on the Army Corps' current position when it comes to uh, cost sharing. So that is all subject to change. Um, and we'll know more on that when the final report comes back for council approval in the fall. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's any questions on that, I'd be happy to answer them. And Ms. Huber, would you like to add anything on behalf of the CLA? Um, so with the CAO's office, uh, we would just continue to support our position from the last meeting and in the report that we issued. We understand that the documents that that are part of the process at this point are not binding to the city. However, we continue to believe that a signature on behalf of the city actually has value and meaning. That's why they're asking for it. Um, we put in front of you a report that had a conceptual framework of a way that we could start looking at funding this project as we continue to firm up the numbers, as we continue to firm up the cost sharing, um, and if and and. Uh, Mr. Santana's request is that, you know, council conceptually agree to this sort of funding framework. Um, it is not 100% everything that might be available to us over the course of the project. There may be other grant opportunities that arise, other ways that we can look at. We're open to any and all of those. They all come with, you know, some of them are competitive. We talked about, you know, the new... Um, enhanced infrastructure districts which have their own unique processes and challenges so we're open to any and all of those and and think we need to look at all of them um, and in the concept of this sort of conceptual framework he would have comfort level signing the report if council was willing to sign on that and your report illustrates all of those Different possible options. funding options for the match yes okay and before I um, begin my questions I just want to state basically to kind of give the big picture here initially in the fall of or the better part of 2014 late 13 2014 it was believed that the total cost for alternative 20 along the 11 mile stretch of the river would be roughly 1.03 billion total cost total cost over a many several you know spread out over several years um, and the city, we unanimously passed a resolution for roughly half of a match over the long term. Uh, and the overall cost for Alternative 20 increased significantly by about $300 million, which puts it to about one point, well, maybe more, 1.4, is that right? 1.36. 1.36 billion. Um, and with that, the, the match increased a great deal as well to half a billion. Um, I'm sorry, to a billion, roughly a billion dollars. So we went from yes. roughly half a million dollar match to roughly a billion dollar match. And so um, out of an abundance of caution um, in working with our colleague Paul Kikorian, budget chair, uh, we wanted to uh, just get all of the details of what exactly we're committing ourselves to and what we're not committing ourselves to without jeopardizing the whole project. So um, as, as Mr. Moore mentioned, I think through a lot of meetings. Uh, when I was in D.C., I had a meeting as well. I think we've ironed out exactly what gets us there without, uh, you know, the incredible uh, commitment that we're talking about. But it is a long time uh, financial capability um, uh, statement that we'll be able to uh, honor. Um, but there are some caveats. So um, with that, I, I would like to just ask a few questions, and, and I'll start with you, Gary. So... The discrepancy in cost sharing from the original, um, they're, they're the result of what? If you could just go over for everyone. We talked about this last time, but if you could kind of go over the, the reason for the escalation in costs and specifically the cost share um, without getting you know, too much into the weeds about it, uh, just kind of give us the big picture of, of why the, the escalation in the match. Um. The cost of, for the overall project increased basically in um, two areas, I should say, in, in one area, which is what's called the lands, easements, rights away, relocation and disposal. That There's two parts to this uh, project cost. 
And in this 11-mile um, study area, there are it's divided up into eight reaches. And in two of the reaches, the cost in, there were cost increases for this land. Uh, the first reach, uh, reach three, which is from Ferraro Fields, right, uh, very close to the 5 Freeway 134 down to Brazil, and includes the Verdugo Wash. That increased uh, from September of 2013 by $76 million, and that was in the, uh, as I said, the acronym is called LURDS. The, and then the other area that saw the significant increase was in uh, Reach 8, which is from Main Street to 1st Street. And this is the part that includes the uh, LATC uh, yard there, the Union Pacific yard, and that increased by approximately $220 million. And once again, that had to do with the lands, easements, rights away relocations, and the key part of that being the uh, relocation. So that's, that's why uh, the cost increase. And as far as the match increase, mm -hmm. um, that basically is because, uh, as the Army Corps understands it now, um, and I know further discussions are taking place and we're all supportive of that, but uh, it's that the city would be responsible for land acquisition and remediation. And and relocation, is that correct uh, for, for that, all these parcels? That is that is correct. And perhaps that wasn't fully anticipated the first go around. In the in the um, September in in the uh, costs um, for for the uh, in September 2013, mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is, is that the Army Corps presented the cost breakdown as if it was uh, for a national ecosystem restoration plan. Mm -hmm. And now that it's now become a locally preferred plan, they have looked at the cost sharing differently because it's a uh, locally preferred is their actual recommendation. And once again, I think, Council Member, you said it exactly right. The city is continuing to look at different steps along the way to adjust this cost sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I understand there are still talks with, with Washington, D.C., the feds at the Army Corps. Um, and that is for a more equitable cost share. And if we aren't able to secure that, what, what do you envision the next step being? Given that, um, let's say we sign this and we move it forward and we do the letter of financial capability, um, if that isn't secured by the end of this year, how, how does this look? Well, I'm everly optimistic that uh, with the city council and the mayor, uh, there's many steps along the way that we'll get to that. Um, but... The, but ultimately, it does come back before uh, the council here to consider. So there will be another opportunity. But I'm everly optimistic that working together um, with the Army Corps in Washington, that with the city council and the mayor, that uh, we'll, uh, we'll come up with a positive resolution. So this is really the first and critical bite of the apple. But before we actually commit to real funding, the project comes back after the uh, Army Corps General's report comes out in the fall. And then we're talking about, that's when we're talking about real dollars and, and real commitments on a project-by-project project basis. Is that roughly true? Well, it's not. It's actually just the plan would be approved. Mm -hmm. Then on an individual-by-individual individual project, of course, the, um, the, you know, the federal government would need to appropriate funding for individual projects. And uh, that's after we acquire the land. So really... Mm -hmm. Although the full plan will come back to you when we start doing individual projects, we, if there's land acquisition, we would have to do it first. So it, once again, a step one puts us back in control there. Secondly, the federal government has to also appropriate uh, uh, the necessary funding. So there's many places down the road uh, also in this process where, where people get an opportunity to review this. And so we're talking months if, and years, and, and um, to Ms. Huber's point, of the, the various funding mechanisms that are in your report, including getting an EIFD off the ground in the future, a portion of those monies in that 11-mile stretch could go toward a match for the various projects that are found in, in the ecosystem study. Um, and that's the, so that's a years-long sort of um, process in concert with the appropriations from Congress. Yes, we see this as a, uh, as a multi, multi-year project. And so... We were, it was believed that we needed to get that letter of intent right about now, but it's been extended to the end of this month, so we have until, I think, the very end of the month. Is, is that correct? And 
I want to make sure I have that extension. March 31st is what the uh, Army Corps has indicated uh, to a date that they need to receive our letter of intent. And if you could tell us one more time the very next steps, um, the Board sure. of Civil Review Board and then the Army Corps report. Sure. What happens, uh, my understanding is, is that uh, right now the Civil Works Review Board, they are holding our spot at the end of June. Okay. So anticipation of receiving our letter of intent. From there, then we go into the what's called the public review of the final report. So once again, the public will get an opportunity to review and comment again. And this is anticipated from uh, July or August. At that time, uh, the Chief of Engineers report then uh, is, uh, is, if, is to be approved in October of 2015. From there, then it would be returned to the city and the city council uh, for approval. Okay. All right. Terrific. So that, that's a couple of critical dates. And the city will have representat representation in Washington for the Civil Works Review Board hearings, I'm sure. Yes, I, I would. I would hope that uh, quite a few of us would go okay. uh, together as a team to be there. Uh, you know, and and uh, you know, I'm joined today by people who have just really dedicated themselves on this project. Our chief deputy city engineer Deborah Weintraub, uh, Dr. Carol Armstrong, and Michael Alfelt have been uh, really on the on the day to day on this tremendously. So if I'm mm -hmm. saying anything incorrectly, uh, team, <laughs> let me know because. Uh, I, I want to make sure the council members have the best uh, possible information. This document is basically signed with their blood. Yes. And I'm aware of that yes. because you've put your blood, sweat, and tears in this. Yes. I'm very aware of that and appreciative of that. Um, well, th thank you, Gary. Um, Mr. Farfan, if you could answer. Um, your report indicates the high cost of the project and potential impact to the general revenue fund if the city pr proceeds. How does the preliminary funding framework, the preliminary framework, assist the project and potentially alleviate the general revenue fund concerns. Uh, well, that would actually be covered under the, the CAO's report. So, okay. Uh, All right. Huber could cover that one. But, uh. um, so, uh, in our report, essentially what we've identified is um, a series of existing funding sources, including the recently passed straight water bond, some of the state cap and trade proceeds, um, potentially looking for private sponsorship and philanthropies um, uh, or nonprofit contributions, looking at brownfield grants, Quimby fees, um, and other federal sources. These are all generally competitive grants. Um, we have plugged in a small amount for uh, general fund. We really kind of pegged that number off of it, a very rough estimate of sort of operations and maintenance costs. We'd really have to look at that as these different projects came online as to who was running them. We kind of made a general assumption it would be rec and parks, but there could be other options for that. Um, and, and with that, we kind of identified with you know our professional judgment about how competitive we might be in these different areas. Obviously, other grants may come up over the time frame that we're looking at this. Um, we'd want to go after any and all of them, whether they be state or federal. Um, but we kind of came up with about $300 million worth of potential opportunities. Um, since that doesn't get us to a billion dollar cost sharing number, um, based on sort of the current framework we have, uh, we did look at other potential funding sources, and that included the Enhanced uh, Infrastructure Finance District. Um, we also put on there some opportunities for um, some voter-approved um, fees, like uh, either going after our wa increasing our water quality fee, going after a general obligation bond similar to our Prop O, um, as other opportunities to potentially um, raise funds to do the entirety of this project. These aren't things that you're all going to do on day one, because as Gary said, you know, the way this project is going to pretty much roll out is we have to provide the land. With Dubai, it, we have to remediate it, and then the Army Corps will do a habitat restoration. So it's going to be a give and take over the course of the project to find the funds to do our pieces of it, as well as our cost share of the, the habitat restoration pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I appreciate that. And um, I just want to make sure you feel comfortable with this, this way forward in terms of we're, we're able to exhibit that we have a financial capability, but we're also not writing a blank check. 
and that that was kind of our goal in putting this out mm -hmm. just to say we we city we need to recognize you know even though this document isn't binding as we move forward with this project as we do move to a binding document because mm -hmm. at some point we will be signing one mm -hmm. um, we are going to have a heavy lift in terms of funding this project over the the, the coming years and we just kind of wanted that framework and that mm -hmm. concept sort of conceptually bought into by the the legislative body so you understand the challenge we're facing terrific thank you uh, okay let's see so um, back to you Matthias um, you did some a little bit of financial analysis sort of groundwork uh, yeah talk a little bit about that let's give us some numbers oh. well it pretty much uh, we were asked to to look into the form of financial analysis on the cost for the plan and, and to do that uh, we really had to go into with um, into what uh, the city engineer referred to as the National Ec Ecosystem Restoration Plan, which was the, the, the plan that the Army Corps selected a, as their preferred plan. And, and as uh, the city engineer mentioned, um, the city has its own lo locally preferred plan, which is uh, more expansive. Uh, so because of that, um, the, the norm is that, that the national, or what they call the NER plan, is the same as the locally preferred plan. In this case, it's two separate plans so the, the the funding the way the cost sharing works is that for a national an NER plan uh, the norm is that they usually the army the federal government will pick up 65 percent of the ecosystem restoration costs the city picks up 35 percent and then there's also a recreation component of the project and uh, there's a 50 50 split on that mm -hmm. but that cost share plan only holds true if uh, the cost of the land is only 25% or less of the total project cost. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, the cost of the land, since it's in, uh, in the city of L.A., uh, near downtown, um, it, it, it makes up more than 50% of the total project cost. Uh, because of that, uh, even for the NER plan, uh, there is already a modified cost-sharing plan that the Army Corps has put forward as their position mm -hmm. which pretty much would require the city to uh, pick up the, the entire cost of the land acquisition of the LERDs mm -hmm. um, is what they're called mm -hmm. and uh, the federal government would pick up the remainder for the ecosystem racing restoration costs but then on the recreation component of the project then it would still be a 50 50 split mm -hmm. but then that going on to the locally preferred plan which is alternative 20 that cost share model is built on the NER model. Okay. And that's where currently the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, their position is, is that their cost would be capped mm -hmm. at the, their cost share amount for the NER plan, mm -hmm. which then that's, that, that's what resulted in the $1 billion cost share component mm -hmm. for the city if we move forward uh, with the Army Corps' uh, proposed um, cost share plan. But as the city engineer mentioned, that there is much work uh, that's still going on regarding those cost share plans mm -hmm. and um, those are still in flux until the completion of the study and do you feel confident that pending further cost sharing alternatives that that we have our own alternatives to fall back on dependent upon where all of this shakes out after the uh, Army Corps of Engineer General's report uh, that I, I would I wouldn't know. I, that'd be more, I'd leave that up to the city engineer to answer that. Well, and what, I'm, what I'm getting at is if Alternative 20 continues to escalate over the next several months, mm -hmm. um, and then um, I, I, what I want to do is just, you know, just put it out there that we have uh, plans that we can fall back on um, and alternatives ourselves that may not exactly be what Alternative 20 is. Um, if, if we don't aren't successful in the negotiations for example or the costs escalate um, I think uh, council member uh, you know we've we've all together said alternative 20 and we've been unwavering as a city and as you know during the public review process it was overwhelming support uh, it was in the 90s high 90s for alternative 20 um, uh, 
we haven't really approached them about uh, any other alternative at this time of, of not alternative 20. But if, once again, as, uh, you know, if that time came, right. you know, we as a city would, yes. Sure, Gary, and I'm not suggesting we do at all, right. because I know that's, this process is not about that at all. Right. But I just, I just want to just, you know, state for the record that we, we will figure a way out forward if, if the costs escalate um, and or if the negotiations are aren't successful or, or, or less than what we feel that they need to be, that so-called second bite at the apple before we, uh, you know, move forward. Yeah, but I'm not suggesting that we right. take that forward now. Uh, but, okay. I just wanted to put that out there. And if um, I could just clarify yeah, one please. last thing. It, it, the, the cost as well, the, I just want to emphasize that those are, are the present value cost. So it, as uh, the CAO and the city engineer have mentioned, this, is, uh, this will be a 15 to 30 year lifespan of this project and uh, so those the cost will gradually increase as we acquire the land I mean land won't cost the same 10 years from now as it costs today so all the dollar amounts that are, are listed in the CLA report I just want to emphasize that those are our current costs mm -hmm. okay all right colleagues questions or yeah. comments yes. first uh, yes, first comment Holland. for the CLA yeah. Uh, and hearing the chairman speak earlier, he said, take a bite out of the apple. I think he should be stricken and say a foot in the water. <laughs> Number one. Number two, have you talked to the city of Glendale? Because uh, Verdugo Narrows is primarily in the city of Glendale. Uh, you know, council member, as uh, right now we're uh, for a, we're, we work with the city of Glendale. The team has worked. But right now this, this does not... Uh, it's not about funding right now or partner. It's about just getting the plan approved. Okay. And, and, and how much just at that particular area near Ferraro soccer field, named after the late great John Ferraro, two-time All-American uh, from USC, how much of that area do you plan to go into the water? Right there, it's all concrete, and there's a big interstate, the five, and there's a big state highway, the 134. How much do you want to touch underneath those pillars? Um, there is a uh, land acquisition in that area, um, and we can go into details, but the land of that area, there's a, a little bit, uh, well, we're show, I'm showing $155 million for land acquisition in that area. So that, that's, uh, once again, as the land is incumbent, incumbent on us to secure, but that's the way. But uh, what would you do in the river there, Mr. City Engineer? Uh, I, if, if you'd like some details, I'll be glad to I do to bring need some details, because here's what I'm saying, Gary. I love you, and I love all the people in the, who are doing this. Uh, but I also think we should focus on where the opportunity exists to transform the river in such a way that this groundswell of, rapport, of support will go beyond the advocates that we know now. And just like I talked to the Department of Transportation about uh, not just the bikeway on the Los Angeles River, but all the San Fernando Valley washes uh, from the Pacoima Wash to the, the ones in the West Valley to all over. Those are right-of-ways that sit there that we could explore quickly. And the thing I want to just be cautious here, whatever is that, and I know that location real well, okay, that you speak of, and I'm saying, okay, that's a lot of money. And I got, a, but if there's an A plan and a B plan, meaning I don't want you to get stuck on an A plan when the B plan could get us to the promised land, because the promised land will then allow us to vision further. I also have been calling for all my time check dams in the Los Angeles River to hold the water back. So A, anybody live here in Long Beach from Long Beach here at all? Where's that? It's at the Long Beach. It's a Long Beach because of that river. Yeah, it's east of San Pedro. Uh, that. I feel terrible about all the trash that goes down, you know, and if we have check dams, we could remove the trash. But the other thing, too, if you see water, and I spoke to someone today, Mr. Chairman, who was here from France, and they're doing a thing on the solar Los Angeles, and I talked about the observatory and the view and the mountains, and I think as individuals, as we see mountains, it gives us inspiration. If we see, see water, it gives us inspiration. From the observatory, you see the ocean. And on a clear day, it's absolutely unbelievable. And this time of year, it's sometimes real special. The point being, those who cross the wonderful uh, part of the city, beautiful movement bridges, and then you're restoring night now, uh, many of them, if they see that water instead of concrete, they feel different than if they see concrete. So check dams, just give it to us. And then, 
it allows other things to happen. You build support. There's a reality to it. Let me ask you another question. You ever been to Omaha? No, sir. Okay. You know who's in Omaha? No. Union Pacific. Okay. And I think someone should go to Omaha, Mr. Chair, and just have a casual conversation. And also someone should go to San Pedro and talk to what if the, the Midway Yard, which used to be a Southern Pacific Yard when we ran passenger service, what if that's not in the equation? Because that's a big equation. I love the concept. In fact, if we were bidding for the 2024 games, there was a whole big, it was exciting, but it didn't go anywhere because we didn't get it. There was a whole big movement to put everything on the river corridor as far as the housing, the villages, and et cetera, and tie in the venues from Dominguez, Cal State, Dominguez Hills, and everything like that. And Mr. Bisky, you know, you may or may not have heard, they would have moved in about 20 uh, uh, ocean liners to provide housing like they did at other events, you know, because there's not all the hotel spaces. But, but anyway, it didn't happen. But I think we should talk to the people of Omaha, see what they want to do, see what the future is. You know why Park La Brea is at 3rd and, uh, and La Brea and 3rd and Wilshire or 6th? Because we had a housing shortage after the war. It wasn't zoned for high-rise, but it became that. And it's the kind of high-rise that I think Michael Legrand likes. Space around, views, not the dense population. I think we've got to look to what combination the housing needs are on, on the uh, river corridor as well in there. And the other thing, too, I want to hear more of, and I love Gil Sadia, but Gil, I've just been, I, I lost years ago on an issue where they built housing right where they blocked the view of the cornfields right up Broadway. You weren't here. If I talked to you, it probably would have been stopped. The point I'm trying to make is connecting the river to Griffith Park and uh, Elysian Park and other parks along the way should be a big value, Dr. Armstrong, a big value that we see. And then the biggest issue that we have, and I know this is on a variety of issues, but is the reclaimed water. I went to a meeting the other day, and I'm going to give you this map as Exhibit A, because they're putting a 66-inch pipeline right there down Silver Lake Boulevard, well, West Silver Lake Drive, excuse me. And they're not sure the water, people were not sure. They said, we're going to get the water back, but does it have to be a blend of water? You know, and what do we do? Those are issues as we come out. So I lay that on there. I'll, uh, I don't know what it costs to go to Omaha, you know, but... Uh, I think the Greyhound still has to stop there. That take longer. I want you back in town. We'll get you on a, a fast freight or something. But I think we should talk to the railroad if we're talking about that. So then we go back. Because Mr. Chair, you talked about not, you know, not being easy, Mr. CAO. You talked about it not being easy. You've got to get that fixed because there's emergency. It doesn't open fast enough. Thank you, Madam Clerk. <laughs> I'm just saying that. If, if we look at all this thing, there's an opportunity to do it right. If we take s such a big picture, they don't believe it. But if we start by increments, it's happening. And I can't tell you how special the river was this year after the rains. And I walked on a Sunday morning, and it was so beautiful. The flows were not heavy as a storm, but they're rushing as if you felt you were really at a real river. So I want to thank you. I just want to put that on. But I think we should reach out because, mm -hmm. you know, they're partners in the future. And... Uh, I see why you picked Carol Armstrong, I know, because she's 20 years from retirement, so she may <laughs> get this done. Okay, I'm teasing you, Carol. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. LeBonge. I'm Thank happy you. to go to Omaha if Joe will go to San Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a Long Beach. <laughs> um, all right, Mr. Buscaino. Okay. okay. And I just wanted to state for the record, Tom, that my office has been working with BOE, with the city of Glendale. I've met with them on uh, several occasions, and we're actually establishing the connectivity they're putting a landing for another pedestrian bridge across right. their wash. Duran, I know. I yeah. suggested that a long time right. ago. So, but they're, they're building, uh, uh, you know, they're going to engineer a place where we can actually place the bridge, yeah. reestablish the connectivity, uh, and we just have to get it funded. So that's why we're, you know, that, that would be part of the vision of the North Atwater Park. And, and a, uh, and a uh, Metrolink, Metrolink stop. So you want to take out all the property there where the... No, I'm not saying I want to no. take out anything. Okay. I'm just saying that we're moving forward with a vision that establishes connectivity I while the rest of um, the, the vision of the, of the river moves forward. But, but the point I was making to that particular, because there's so many pillars in the river that hold up a freeway, would Caltrans and others be against touching any of this? Because all you have to do to hold the freeway, right now it's into the... God, that's what I'm saying. Go where, the, where you get a hit, you know, yes. right away. Thanks. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all so much. Um, I uh, would, we have one public comment card, so I want to thank all of you for answering, and we'll, we'll move forward here. But uh, we have one public comment card, um, and that is Mr. Lewis McAdams.
He's a railroad man, Lewis McAdams. That's right. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Lewis, I didn't even see you, so, <laughs> but welcome. I'm glad you're here. I am glad I'm here too. It's Lewis McAdams, Friends of the Los Angeles River. Um, the what we're trying to accomplish here today. It's something Friends of the Los Angeles River has been working on for many years, two or three, almost three decades. It, we've, Friends of the Los Angeles River went so far as to actually put a million dollars to the Corps of Engineers, the first time in the history of the United States Corps of Engineers where they took money from private donations, allowed them to finish the Arbor Study. The Friends of the Los Angeles River organized the Piggy Backyard Collaborative, which for the last more than 10 years has been pointing at the Piggy Backyard and saying, this land belongs to the public. It's for flood detention, parkland creation, and wetlands restoration. Uh, we, were very, we worried a lot that, this, that the Piggy Backyard was not going to be included in this study and in, in in going forward because it is a large scale, a big ticket item. But fortunately, you guys were visionary enough to see through that short-term thinking and uh, see this w as a project that will take, it's like building a subway system. Building a better river is like building a subway system because it's an infrastructural move that we're all make, committing ourselves to. Um, I would just wanted to say that the, we are very supportive of signing this letter of intent. We know it's a big step for the city. We know it's a big step for the river. We know it's a big step for the, all of us who care about the Los Angeles River. And this is, we know that this is not the binding final word on the subject, but it's a major step. It's a step forward into the future. And I congratulate this committee for its bravery in taking this on on behalf of Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McAdams. We would not be where we are if it weren't for you. So thank you. Sure, any time. <laughs> All right, colleagues, um, I uh, suggest that we note and file the CLA report and approve and move to council the BOE and CAO report, and with the understanding that this item is also pending in budget committee. Um, nonetheless, it all moves forward pending um, what our budget chair says. Without objection, we move it forward. Thank you. And colleagues, at this time, I would recommend that we take items 3, 4, and 7 on consent Move it. if there are no objections. All right. Um, having said that, I'd like to move to item number two. Item number two is a Bureau of Engineering report relative to the status of various projects connected with the Los Angeles River Revitalization Master Plan. Hey, Linda. Thank you. Dr. Armstrong. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chairman O'Farrell. Uh, Carol Armstrong. Uh, on loan from uh, Bureau of Engineering as uh, Ellie River Works in City Hall under Mayor Garcetti. I just want to go over a couple of highlights in the report. Um, we have uh, some, some exciting action on Ellie River Greenway 2020. A lot of the action has been happening in the valley. Sepulveda de Kester is in construction and its grand opening we expect in later this summer. That's in Council District 4. Coldwater to Whitsit is in design, and its groundbreaking is expected also midsummer, and that is in Council District 2. Coldwater to Whitsit on the North Bank is um, in construction, and that is a project of community conservation solutions. That's on the North Bank, also in Council District 2, so we would sort of have a river loop going on there once those are both completed. Um, so Van, Al Van Alden to Balboa, the city uh, team put together a concept for the state's affordable housing and sustainable communities grant program, but it was not selected to advance. Um, however, uh, we are now working with um, the River Revitalization Corporation, FOLAR, Metro, and LADOT to um, see if we can get some support from LA NSYNC on the grant writing to get this uh, project advanced for um, ATP, Active Transportation Program funds. Uh, I wanted to acknowledge our, um, our colleagues at the county who have been leading the effort on the Witsit to Riverside Zoo segment of the Greenway, and our colleagues at Metro who are advancing the downtown in-channel bike path from Barclay to the city of Maywood. So you can see a lot of council districts will be touched by these Greenway 2020 projects, and it's pretty exciting. Um, 
There are a variety of uh, key projects along the river that are underway. Uh, of course, the Trust for Public Lands, the Lisa Creek Confluence Park is in design and it still needs funds. The Caballero Creek Confluence Park is an MRCA project. Um, the Mountains Recreation and Conservation Authority, and that one's also in design. Uh, the LA River Veteran Tribute Park is in pre-design, and that is a project of LA Conservation Corps. And the LA, and the Lacrets Crossing is a project of the LA River Revitalization Corporation. Um, we're very excited about the next steps on Central Service Yard, the master planning. That will be very obvious and a very large-scale change. Of course, we're very excited about Taylor Yard G2, the acquisition. We know the negotiation is ongoing. Um, Taylor Yard Bridge represents a partnership on here. It says of, uh, the city and BOE is the lead, but I also want to acknowledge Metro that helped fund the design and the Department of Water and Power because it will be bringing a recycled water pipeline across the river as well. <clears throat> and then Albion Dairy Park, of course, um, which would be the first uh, park on the east side of downtown Los Angeles in a really long time. So that pre-design report is being finalized right now. Um, great progress there just recently on the LA River Ecosystem Restoration Feasibility Study. We're super excited about the big moment in June at the Civil Works Review Board. I hope that we can get a great team of um, people from the city and all of our partners going to DC to show the Army Corps just how important it is to us this summer. And another action, federal action, is the Juan Bautista de Anza National Historic Trail Certification. Um, we are in the process of doing that with the National Park Service. And um, this is uh, to coincide with the National Park Service's centennial, which is in uh, 2016. Um, two other things I wanted to um, thank you, Councilman O'Farrell and Councilman Labonge, for being at the uh, Sister River signing with the um, Kingdom of the Netherlands, the Consul General of the Netherlands, and Mayor uh, Ahmed Abutaleb from Rotterdam. It was fun. That, wasn't that fun? And that yeah, was here fun. in Los Angeles. I don't want you to think we're over in Rotterdam uh, doing that. <laughs> That's right, down in the river in the Glendale Narrows near the frog spot, near Folar's frog spot. It was a nice ceremony and then a nighttime visit to the river, which was a good adventure. And no one fell in. That's right. And I also wanted to acknowledge Isabel Gerardo, a new member of our team, our LA Riverworks team, and she's the one that worked closely with the Consul General's office to set that in motion. And um, I also wanted to uh, commend the Department of Cultural Affairs because their proposal, current LA River call to action on water conservation through art, was selected, bless you. Oh, bless you. It was selected as one of 12 finalists for a million dollars from the Bloomberg Public Art Challenge. And three cities will be selected from the 12 finalists. And that will mean that we will have a river public arts program, a biennial in the city. But the first one will be on the river. And that would, um, that would be very exciting to allow people public access to areas they hadn't accessed before and would also help build out a recommendation of the city's master plan. And then I just want to acknowledge another member of our staff, Melissa Guerrero. She's here in the audience. She was the one who organized our Cicla Rio at Cicla Via yesterday in the Valley. And it was in partnership with Folar, the RRC, and Play the LA River. Nice. Thank you. Uh, so, Carol, if you could, uh, the, the Taylor Yard Bridge. Mm -hmm. What is the latest and greatest in terms of funding, the gap, the construction timeline, et cetera? Okay, that's a very good question. This is a project of um, the City uh, Bureau of Engineering. And um, this project, as far as I understand it, was in the, um, in the budget request for, um, I believe they need uh, about $7 million to construct it. Mm -hmm. So um, the design is nearing completion, as mm -hmm. far as I understand. Is Deborah mm -hmm. here? Deborah. No, not quite. It, it's, it is it's in design. design. Yeah. Because we, we previewed the initial concept several months back. Okay. And the, is, it, is Metro, are they funding the design? Is that how we're doing this? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then to construct, is that right? The amount that I said? Yes. Seven okay. million. Yeah. Okay. It's exciting. We just have to find that money. But it's, it's worth noting that we have two other uh, footbridges, multimodal bridges that don't involve cars that are funded. Uh, connecting, actually, they're connecting 13 to, to CD4. We just need to get the funding for the, uh, the, the um, arguably, well, one of the most important bridges of all, and that's Taylor Yard, connecting Elysian Valley to Taylor Yard. Uh, so, all right, well, well thank you for that. Um, 
All right. Well, thank you. Colleagues, any questions for yeah, Dr. Armstrong? Yeah, a question. I didn't see anything mentioned about the 6th Street Bridge, and I think even though it's maybe not under your peer view, it's going to be a tremendous asset to the river because uh, the new effective, and I was a proponent of saving the bridge, but the new design is unbelievable and how you can walk across the bridge. Are you been briefed? I have been briefed, but the one who knows the most about it is uh, Chief Deputy City Engineer Deborah Weintraub. And we don't need to brief you, but just to include that on the river, I think you should. You're, but you're not engineering anymore, right? You're on loan? I'm on loan. I think you should include the bridges somehow, Deputy Chief City Engineer, because I think they have impact, especially the work that Mitchell Farrell's done on the river bridge in Atwater that's going to come over to the east side of the river, connect to the Hyperion Bridge, and solve a lot of uh, projects there you know, on there. And also, I think it's key on the central service yard. Do you want to replace the whole yard? So, Tom, I can probably answer that better. We, the, the initial report literally says nothing because we're starting with just an evaluation and we're going to evaluate the, the use of the property as it now is. So nothing has been done. Um, what I'm terribly interested in is the, the you know, river adjacent portion, of course. Right. So we're not sure yet what the report is going to inform us, but we just got it funded, so we'll be moving forward with that. Uh, the one thing that in uh, 16 weeks you won't have is the institutional memory. The condemning of Griffith Park condemned part of mm -hmm. Griffith Park to build the state interstate. The central service yard, not in the size of it was, was in the parks by where the pony is. So that land was bought out of the court settlement. You've got to check the chain of land. Mm -hmm. So you see that? The one thing I would ask you do tomorrow, and they're greatest people in the world, the urban foresters who work for record parks, but pack them deeper in the lot and unfold like a butterfly's wing. I tried to do this was in my district. Un unfold like a butterfly's wing. That section where you've done such a wonderful job at the Los Angeles River Park where the Secretary of the Interior came out. That's easy, you know, to do and, and all that stuff. But do an assessment. But, but the one challenge that Recreation Parks has and other departments that were in the 223 North Figueroa is they're very uh, hurt by that fire relocation to get caught up to speed. So that's something that I... I know that would be good to 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 look at, Mr. O'Farrell, because it's right there, and also the K the K uh, uh, zone for all the horses to make their sure they establish there. And there is a proposal, Mr. O'Farrell, that I don't know if you've been briefed on, but kick it around. But now that I'm leaving, all these people come back. What's going to happen to this? There is a request to put a ring where the police department is. That's public ring, but the police use it when they need it. Okay. Do you know about that? I don't. Okay, you should know about that. So. Uh, I know, we sure will, but no, we'll walk out and see what we can do because it's been kicking around a lot through the police department. Okay, and Dr. Armstrong, I just want to say this because I don't know, and Deputy Chief Deborah Weintraub, just want to thank you. You're two of the, this is a salute to Women's Week in the United States. I don't know if you know that. And women engineers are very important. You've really done a great job, both of you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Mr. LeBonge. And they're also mentoring other young women at one of my high schools. So Good. thank you. Uh, so uh, in, in a couple of months, I'd like you to come back, in fact, couple, come back every two months, bi-monthly, um, and uh, report on all river projects. That would be great. So Mr. LeBunge, yeah. Dr. Armstrong will be back in May to give you a full, final report. But you won't be, you won't be forgotten because I'll probably be calling you every other day on oh, institutional I know. I know. things. Yes, I will. Thank you, Mitch. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Armstrong. Um, all right. Um, now I would like to go to item five. Um, Mr. Chair, do you wish to yes. note and file the, the oh, yes. report that was submitted? Oh, yes, note and file. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> item number five is a city attorney report and ordinance relative to the establishment of a trust fund to support the operations of the Los Angeles City Health Commission and the amendment of the City Health Commission ordinance to remove restriction on funding. This matter was also referred to the Budget and Finance Committee. Thank you. And we have uh, City Attorney Valerie Flores. One of the great city attorneys, I might say. I second that. All right, Ms. Flores, where are we? Uh, good afternoon, council members. Um, we have transmitted for your consideration an ordinance that does two things. It establishes a trust fund to accept donations uh, for the operations of the new city health commission. We have already received one uh, large and generous uh, donation offer of $100,000. Um, 
the trust fund will um, ensure that the funds are uh, restricted for use by the City Health Commission um, and um, has a place for them to land and be monitored. Um, and then the second part of the ordinance um, actually removes a funding restriction in the original ordinance. You may recall that the original ordinance was adopted by council as a result of a successful petition drive. So the uh, ordinance cannot be amended unless um, the amendments further the purpose of the ordinance. Um, the CAO's office, um, the, well, the original ordinance had a funding restriction. It said that no general fund monies could be used to fund the city health department. Um, the CAO uh, researched potential other sources of funding for the department and was unable to locate any other uh, sources of funding. Um, and so in order to further the purposes of the commission, we have eliminated the funding restriction. The elimination of the funding restriction does note that the general fund won't be obligated to provide funds for the City Health Commission, but if the uh, council and mayor desire to use general funds for the Health Commission, they can do so. Mm -hmm. Why? Say, I thought I heard you say that the general funds will be or will not be. Well, the original ordinance said that general funds could not be used. Right. But then right now you said... Yes, we've now... This ordinance eliminates that funding restriction and gives the city the option, not the duty, but the option of using general funds to fund the health commission if, for example, they need right. them... I, I, I understand that. But did I hear you say that the city would then be obligated? No, no. The city would not be obligated. Right. That was my... Okay. Point. Yes. Thank you. But and we'll have the discretion. No, I the, I everything else. I just wanted okay. to, on the obligation <laughs> question, did you say not? Or yes, will? there was a not in there. <laughs> if I was speaking too quickly, I apologize. That's well, not like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to I thank the city attorney's office for working so closely with my office to really unlock that because it was kind of the poison pill preventing us from getting this off the ground. And we have this generous donation uh, from AIDS Healthcare Foundation to really get this commission up and running. So... Um, I really want to commend you for that. Um, is there a time frame in terms of when the donation will, will transmit? Um, well, when the um, ordinance becomes effective and the tr uh, fund is established, we can accept it any time thereafter. Okay. So um, I understand this item is pending in budget and finance, but we'd like to hear from the city clerk regarding the process for sending out the... What we want to do is we want to get the commission up and running. So. Uh, how quickly can we send out the letters? Uh, I think most council members have identified their selection for a commissioner. Holly. Uh, Holly Walcott, city clerk. Normally, actually, the council president sends out commission letters, although if the city clerk is instructed to do so, we would be happy to. Okay. I, well, I don't mind going through the normal process. That's, that sounds good. Uh, but it would, we wouldn't want to jump the gun. We want to get the ordinance adopted first, correct? So that it's in the books and then the letters would go out immediately after? Correct. And once we are notified from everyone of the, um, by all the council offices of their, mm -hmm. uh, their nominees, mm -hmm. all right. nominees, then we can put a meeting and, together. And it's to also my understanding, I'm sorry to talk over you. It's also my understanding that the commissioners are simply appointed by the council member and there is no, um, that there's no review process for the, for the whole city council. It's just I adopt my commissioner and they're the commissioner. Is that's, that, that's, that's my understanding. That's no my understanding as well. Process. That's right. my understanding. That's the word I was looking for. No, no confirmation process. All right. Just uh, a technical yes. question, Holly. In my particular case, if I appoint someone, does that mean they're only appointed as long as I'm here? Or is there a term? I would have to... Could, yeah, We'd have to... If you could check that, because I want a recommendation from the city clerk's office. I'm going to yeah. guess it's yeah. until until they're replaced by... Yeah. I mean, as long as you are the sitting council member, you do have the uh -huh. authority to appoint. So let me just... Um, but if I it would assume a new, just checking to see a new council person could have the choice yeah. of either continuing that... Mm -hmm. okay. So one-year appointment. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, good. With, okay. Are there any restrictions on reappointments or... No. Sorry. All right. No. So the, the person would serve for one year, and then the new council person... Whoever she or he may be could select somebody. Mm -hmm. Correct. Got it. Oh, thanks. There was a, just correct me, 
But it seemed to me that part of the premise of this commission was that there was not going to be general fund. Was that, am I mistaken? That was the original yes, premise. Yes, the original ordinance, um, the premise of it would be that uh, there would be no general funds used. Right, and that was kind of the previous discussion we had about not delaying the appointment. Even though we didn't have the infrastructure in place, it didn't preclude us from making our appointments, right? R right. There was a bit of a catch-22 because um, without any other funding other than general funds in place, even city staff time right, right. working on the appointments might be illegal under the ordinance. Right. But and the, so that's why we've removed the funding restrictions so that city staff can go through the process of um, facilitating the appointments. But we also now have revenue streams, right, or a revenue stream. We, we hope to get um, the, the offered $100,000 donation. And um, I think the idea would be that any donations would be used first before the general fund is tapped. But you just now have the option, if you adopt the ordinance, of tapping the general fund, if need be, in the future. Right. Just a question. So you accept the $100,000, and you put it in a trust account? Got it. Thank you. Under the CAO. City Clerk. City Clerk. City clerk. How many uh, trust accounts do you have, you think? 48. 48. Thank you. Roughly. Very good. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we have uh, four comment cards on this, starting with Bradley Hertz, followed by Stanley Chapman, followed by Terry Morant, I think. Good afternoon, Mr. Good afternoon. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Bradley Hertz of the Sutton Law Firm, and I'm here today on behalf of the AIDS Healthcare Foundation and Michael Weinstein. Um, with me today are several health advocates who work with AIDS Healthcare Foundation on public health matters, uh, a few of whom will speak to us today. Welcome, and thanks for coming downtown to see us. Uh, we're here today to speak in support of agenda item five. We thank the city attorney's office and city staff for working to create the language that creates the trust fund, uh, as well as the amendment to the Health Protection Act. Um, we also urge the immediate appointment of the members of the commission so that notice can be provided to them, the seed money can be provided by AIDS Healthcare Foundation, and the act can be amended. Um, in Section 7 of the Act, under amendment, 30 days' notice is required to the Commission before the ordinance can take effect. So we think uh, the steps should be notice, to, uh, notice for the appointment, the appointment, notice to the appointees, then the amendments, and then the uh, money will be forthcoming as requested so that the, uh, the Commission can get going. Terrific. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. And now, Counselor, I have one requirement that you know Mr. Weinstein. Take our special guests to the tower uh, so they can see the Tom Bradley Tower and enjoy the view of the city since some of them may be their first visit. And then uh, I'd appreciate that. Mr. Weinstein, I think, would too. I would enjoy that. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll you know how to go up there? Uh, I have never been there up we'll, there we'll myself, get you up there. so yeah, we'll, super. we'll do okay. that. Thank That's you. That's a great idea, Mr. LaBunch. Yeah. Uh, Stanley Chapman and then Terry Manant. Miranda, my apologies. Chris. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Stanley Chapman, 58-year-old resident of Los Angeles. I thank you for considering and adopting this ordinance and putting it, putting, uh, setting up the trust fund because it's greatly needed, the commission for health, for health of all kinds, for people young, old, alike. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you Appreciate so much. it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Morant, followed by Charles Lawson. Good afternoon. My name is Terry Grant. Um, I myself am here because I like the simplicity of what I have read and what I've heard from some of the people that I've been going to school with. Documentation, I think, is the most important thing in a matter like this so that we can keep up with what is going on step by step. So for me, it's just the simplicity of the whole matter. 
And it really isn't complicated at all because sometimes we seem to make things complicated when they really are not. So for me, that's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Grant. And Mr. Charles Lawson. Good afternoon. My name is Charles Lawson. I'm HIV positive. I just want to thank the, you for moving forward in setting the Los Angeles Health Commission in Los Angeles. And I want to tell you how important this is for all the Angelinos in the city. I hope this gets done in the next month. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I want to thank all of you. Appreciate that. Um, all right, with uh, out uh, move objection, we will approve Second. the draft ordinance and move it, move it forward. Thank you. So moved. Um, and lastly, item six. Item number six is a city administrative officer report relative to a request from the Department on Disability for retroactive authority to execute 16 service contracts to provide HIV prevention services throughout the city of Los Angeles. Thank you. So do we, we're, we're good, we don't want to hear a report? We'll move yeah, it, you, good, you all want to move it forward? Good. This is good. Back. It's yeah? Do, yeah. Do, you want to, you want to, do you want to say anything very briefly before we move it forward? Or you lose your quorum or lose your uh, votes? No, other than just introduce it. I'm actually with the CAO. I'm not with the Department of Disabilities. Okay. Okay. Good. Move it. Terrific. Second. Well, Second. No comic Second. cards. Second. We will approve Second. the CAO report. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Seeing as no other items, this Thank meeting you. is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you, Kyo. Comment on that, please. Thanks, Kyo.